How you doing? This is Alex again with Green Rev. I am uh, just completely grounded and centered, but I'm like beyond myself. This is the second time that this gentleman, Dr. Dixon Despomier, uh, the author of The Vertical Farm, uh, has been willing to meet with me. And um, I can't thank you enough, Dr. Dixon, and I want to talk to you about everything from education to the future of humanity. So, well, where should we begin? Wow. <laughs> Let's see. I think we start with the primordial ooze. <laughs> <laughs> Right, was that a double yeah. helix water? Where the, uh, yeah, it was a single <laughs> helix to begin with. It, it was, was it so single? simple. A single <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but seriously, yeah, it was I mean, an RNA molecule. It wasn't even a helix. Right, right, and that's how it all started. Supposedly. Supposedly. From yeah. a comet that landed on Earth from some other place. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't even know where to begin, so I'm just going to start talking. Uh, we see in the distance here the George Washington Bridge. Yep. You know, we are, uh, you know, an epicenter of one of the biggest cities in the world. Right. And the most um, densely populated. Most densely populated in the world. And, you know, we have, I don't think it's possible, I think it's probable that humanity starts to live in balance with nature because we're at that tipping point, as Malcolm Gladwell talks about, that we, we, we need to do something. And it's like this, this sure. inspirational dissatisfaction that yep. Senator Booker talks about. Yep. We need to take action. So you wrote this book. I did. You're a dreamer, you're a visionary, and I, I see the spark that you lit. And then you see these people popping up all over the place doing this. You see Aero Farms in Newark, like you mentioned. You see all these different people doing this. Um, and, and I just wanted to ask you, what inspired you? You know, and, and, and what you know, just I want to sort of hear your story of you know where you came from and how you're sure. here. All yeah. right. How much time have you got? As much as you need. <laughs> I, I was staying here. I, I was sleeping. Oh, uh, you will learn to regret that one, <laughs> Alex. This is going to take a while, but I'll yeah. start with the fact that if you don't have help with people of a uh, similar mind, mm -hmm. they won't get anywhere. So you need to cooperate, you need to uh, collaborate, you need to brainstorm, you need never to make fun of an idea, mm. ever. Never to make fun of an idea. Ever. Those crazy ideas you have, kids and adults, trust them. You know, make sure they're not too crazy, but trust no, them, no, no, never no, make fun no, of an idea. you don't hurt anybody. Right, right. No, I think Einstein said, uh, if the idea isn't crazy, it's probably not worth doing. I love that, I love that. So it's a great quote, but it's something that we all believe. Right. Because, I mean, when you think back, okay, so here's here's my take on all of this. Yeah. And that is, if I were to ask you, what do you think the world will look like 100 years from now? Mm -hmm. You could probably sit down and, well, I think the cars would be different and people would be living in more communal situations where they're sharing resources. And maybe electricity will be driving everything rather than fossil fuels because mm -hmm. we're going to run out. Right, right, yeah. And, well, that's going to run out too, but that's a little longer. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah, another yeah. five billion years yeah, or so. Yeah. So, that's one answer to that question. What do you think the world will look like in a hundred years? Hundred years. All right, but that's the wrong question, isn't it? Because if I took you back a hundred years, hmm. and then I asked the same question, you could have never predicted this, ever. We have so many new inventions that arose over the last twenty to thirty-five years. Okay. The internet, you know, high definition television, outer space. Yeah. We have the Hubble Space Telescope. We're about to the, the, the web telescope. Web We're telescope. We're going to be looking at the origins of us. Okay. So a hundred years ago, that would have never been an idea even to do. Right. J just like uh, I believe it's true that uh, that you, we used to think in you know the early 1900s, 1910, maybe 30 that. We, it was more likely that we'd be able to shrink ourselves like honey, I shrunk the kids and go into the bloodstream than it would you get to the moon. Correct. Right? And so, like, the fact that, like, think about that. Like, wait, wait, that's crazy. Well, no, it's not crazy. It's ingenuity that, that makes things possible. Right. So they made yeah. a movie out of it called Fantastic Voyage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a lousy movie, by yeah. the way. Yeah, but it was worth it. Because <laughs> they didn't really understand what it looked like inside the beginning. But now we know. We yes. can remake that movie. It would be fantastic. Right. All right. But right. The real question is... What would you like the world to look like in a hundred years? Love that. What would you like the world to look like in a hundred years? Right. That's the that's the most important Because now question. you're in control. Right. And now you have you're, you're not this helpless being. No. Nope. One out of what is it? Six, seven billion now? Whatever it is. Right. Seven point two billion people. Seven point two billion people. Population skyrocketing. Urban sprawl is predicted to be two thousand fifty. We're all going back to the cities. Sure. We, we need to deal with human waste, sure. animal waste. Yeah. You know, clean oxygen, clean air. Yet we still have these these massive corporations that are still doing things. Yeah. And, and with no offense to them, but rather the, the, the invitation to start a conversation, you know, to, to talk about fossil fuels. And to talk Why about no the way offense in which you live. to them? Well, <laughs> well, I mean, well, because I think that perhaps I try to not take a centrist point because I'm completely green, but like, like Mandela says, you know, you need to talk with your enemy in order to make them your friend. So By the way, I just got yeah. back from South Africa, so oh. thank you very much yes, for that. Right. <laughs> and, and, and inspirational human being, right? 
Absolutely. Got out of prison after 27 years, Tell illegally, apartheid 1990. We saw the island where he was held prisoner, right off Cape Town. Was that Robin Island? Yes, Robin Island. Was. Still is. It, and do you, okay, do you, do you remember the Soon, day? however, yeah. it will be underwater because the uh, <laughs> because of because of global warming, because of climate change. Right. Climate change. And thank you, Al Gore, for the inconvenient truth. Um, yeah. And other people too. Though. Yeah, and other people too. Uh, I wasn't gonna say so much. Uh, so he and his, you know, I, I just we're gonna go with the conversation. I love it. He used to call his guards my honorable guards. Yep. Because he knew the power of language and words, right? Well, eventually he knew he would be free. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and they would have to honor him, right? And and when you speak to people with that kind of like you know, uh, you know, the, the, the ethical students, the, the, the wonderful you know, uh, you know, uh, positive X Y Z person, they they can become that. Right? Positive, positive, all positive. All so, positive. what would you like it to look like? What would you like? Right. It to look like? So that's how this idea started because I ran a class of seven students. That's it. Seven students. It was an elective course called <laughs> medical ecology. Medical. And in this course. When you have a course that's that open-ended mm -hmm. with very few students, what are your options? And the answer is everything. Mm -hmm. So I would sit down and ask them, well, what do you want to talk about? Yeah, 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 it's awesome. Well, you're the professor. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, but you're the student. <laughs> I just think that my kids like, you know, my career is set. <laughs> I'm going to do this every year, but what are you going to do? Right, right. What would you like the world over? I didn't say it then, but mm -hmm. I thought about it. So we, I said, I'll tell you what. Why don't we go around the room and find out what each one of us thinks is the most pressing issue facing humanity at this moment? And you're going to get seven different answers, right? We got one answer. Climate change. That was it. They said population. Well, then, uh, the reason why population is out of control right now is because people are moving back into the cities because the farming is failing. Hmm. And the farming is failing. Oh, climate change. Okay, fine. And, and, and this was what year, Doctor? 1999. 1999. Yep. These Columbia students. It was the year the West Nile virus arrived on this shore. Wow. So that that was a seminal year for me because those students all of all of them wanted to do something about climate change. Yeah. What is it to be done? I mean, one person? Are you kidding? Yeah. So before we go any further, let me give you my reading list. <laughs> I'll write this down. Oh, I don't know my list. Okay. So we start with a book called The Lorax. The Lorax? Everybody knows about the Lorax. Well, the Lorax. This is what happens when you take everything away. Dr. In Seuss? Name? Yeah, sure. But he wrote the book not for kids. He wrote it for himself. Hmm. He wrote this book as a lesson to himself as to what happens when you disconnect all the networks of life. Right? That's book one. Book number two is a book by uh, Edward O. Wilson, and that book is called Diversity of Life, and I'm sure you're familiar with it because there's, there are many editions of that book. Mm -hmm. So the diversity of life teaches you about the wonders of this planet. It's the only one we think so far that has life on it. Right. And look at the life. I mean, you can't go anywhere without finding life. Again, I was in South Africa. They have the deepest mines in the world. They have a mine that goes down two and a half miles. They're mining gold. Crazy. Yeah. They go down two and a half miles for gold. gold. You can't even eat it. You can't even eat it. Right. It's, 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 so it's, what do you think they're finding two and a half miles down? There's something oozing out of the rocks. Yeah. And it's called snot. 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 Technical term. Snot. <laughs> So no one knew what it was. Yeah. They just thought it was snot. Yeah. So then one year, a microbiologist decided to go down to see if snot was actually something. It is. It's something. It's bacteria. Bacteria. Two and a half. Oozing out of now. the rock. Oozing out of the rock. They live in the rock. In fact, they eat rock. They eat rock. Are they anaerobic or aerobic? Anaerobic. Without oh. oxygen. Tremendous anaerobes. There's yeah. a chemosynthetic anaerobic bacteria. Chemosynthetic anaerobes. So, so they, 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 chemosynthetic, they, they synthesize chemicals, right? And not oxygen. You know, it doesn't need oxygen to breathe. And then that breaks down some portion of the rock, you know, and then it spits and out. And they eat that. Hmm. that. In fact, it's claimed that all of the ores that we see are accumulated in places by microbes that put it there. Wow, it's almost their excrement, the purified excrement. Well, wouldn't that be great if we found out that gold <laughs> was a microbial excrement? <laughs> I mean, it would really be ironic. Yeah, <laughs> I love you, honey. Will you marry me? We, uh, way, here's some <laughs> we go all over the world looking for excrement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Priceless. Right. 
panning for excrement. Yeah. Right? So let, I'm going to talk about excrement also because yeah, it's, okay, because food equals waste. Right, but it's right. not waste. Though. I'll get to that. Okay. The point is that life refuses to take no for an answer, mm -hmm. no matter where you want to go. You can find it in the hot springs of Yellowstone Park. You can find it in Mariana's Trench, which is like 36,000 feet below the ocean. You can find it in the crust of the earth. And, and as far as that, what you just said, uh, I know that uh, an amazing school, Alta Vista School in San Francisco, so you have a kid in San Francisco, send to the school, Alta Vista School, off the mission. They, right now, two plays they're conducting. Guess what they're on? Student produced and student choreographed. One is on the Mariana Trench and how they're finding plastic in it. That's, this is a play. How progressive is that school, right? And the other is on black holes and why we should care how they affect our daily lives. So, sorry to interrupt. I just had no, to. No, you're yeah. not interrupting. Yeah. This is a free flowing conversation. Yeah, it just made me. Yeah, that's right. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. triggers alone. So, yeah. so then that's how the class evolved in 1999. Mm -hmm. So, if climate change is the problem, what's the answer? Right. Well, there was a famous ecologist, Benny. But what I like the best is Howard Odom, not Eugene Odom, Howard Odom. Okay. That was Eugene Odom's brother. Actually, I like Howard and I like Eugene both. Mm -hmm. Eugene Odom wrote a book, which I also recommend, called Fundamentals of Ecology. And that book should be read by every politician, every planner, every city municipal leader. This book tells how life integrates together to produce the earth. Wow. Okay. And it's written in simple terms. Nice. His brother, on the other hand, was not a simple individual. He was a complex individual. And he ended his career at the University of Florida. Okay. And he became world famous for his boxology of life. Boxology. Yeah, boxology. So the sun shines down and it makes this much energy. All right. And then that much is taken off and used for these plants. And that plant is eaten by this animal. Uh -huh. And each one is in a little box. And it's the size of the box is how much they take. Of the sunlight. Yeah, the so you can you can get a moving picture yeah. and a still drawing of the way an entire year's worth of ecosystem behaves. He invented how to depict that. That's beautiful. So so I think that's really important because I talk about very important. I talk about graphing a lot, right? Very important. And and I think about you know the standards you want to hit in the curriculum, but I think about which is important. But I think about how visual. I mean, how much of our brain is dedicated to vision? Our I totally agree. Right? right? We're right. so visual. So like that's right. Boxology. I just that's want to reiterate this. It's this genius Howard Odom. Howard Odom is this ecologist. Ecologist. He made it. Uh, he he boiled down the ability to go from huge one box to sun you know, max, whatever that is, energy per year, per day. And then the proportional amount of energy that each organism, toad, plant, frog, human, uses, and then you get to see, in living terms, all that in front of you. And for that, a year. For a year, and that's pretty substantial. So uh, that's like a, substantial. a still motion picture. A still motion picture shows you that that's, yeah, ingenious. So when we so, talk about graphing, yeah. So I'm gonna give you his quote. Yeah. Nature has all the answers. That's only half of the quote. Mm -hmm. What's your question? <laughs> right. I love it. So what is your question? Biomimicry. So there you go. So that that will lead us into another discussion. Yeah, sure. So so inspired by nature, basically that's that's basically what we're talking about. So right. another book that I, I required is called The Man Who Planted Trees. And the reason why I require the book is because it shows you what a single individual can do mm. over his lifespan or her lifespan. Yeah. This man accumulated seeds of a particular tree, picked out the best ones, mm -hmm. and every day he planted 100 of those. Every day? Every day. One day 100 seeds? Per day for the rest of his life. Wow. And he used an iron bar to stick into the ground and move it back and forth and drop the seed in and stepped on it, that's one. Now you have to take a hundred steps when you're out walking your dog. You're doing it anyway. You're going to do it anyway. Might as well enjoy the process you and help out. Might as well out. accomplish something in the meantime. Yeah. So he did a random walk. Well, the, the book is beautifully written. Uh, I'm yes, by I'm Jean, all these. J-E-A-N. And the last name is Giono. G-E-O-N-O. John Giono. John Giono. And that's a book of anaplanet trees. Okay, so fine. The, the, the Lorax tells you what happens when the trees go away. Yep. And the man who planted trees tells you what happens when they come back. Right. Okay, you've got two books. Right. Now. Three books. Uh, well, uh, the biodiversity of life, the diversity of life shows mm -hmm. you what happens when more than one kind of seed gets there. This is the biodiversity of life. Yeah, that's not biodiversity. It's just called the diversity of life. Yeah. E.O. Wilson, you already wrote it down. Okay. 
Another book I highly recommend, and this uh, book is always recommended by English professors or English teachers in hmm. schools, usually at the wrong time hmm. in someone's life. Okay. Right? Like high school. Yeah. <laughs> well, why'd that be the wrong time? It's not like anything's going it's on. It's always the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> Hormones are hitting you. Come on, forget <laughs> yeah. about it. I used to learn I sociology when you look at Amy's beautiful legs. Exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> that's the name of another book. You won't go there. Oh, man, that's a right, The name of this book is called, and you will know this book, it's called The Grapes of Wrath. Yeah. And it's written by John Steinbeck. Mm -hmm. And it's the history of modern agriculture in the United States. So those are, I'm going to put this down here because I'm going to So, yeah. I love this book too, though, Cradle to Cradle. Cradle to Cradle. And the reason why I love the book is that if you read the first chapter, you can read the whole book, that's it. Yeah. The first chapter is the entire book. Yeah. And it's again and again and again and again yeah. and again and again. Right. again. Right. Just keep circling. And, and, and can you tell the, the, the viewers what Cradle to Cradle is? You know, and, A sure sure can. So, yeah. there's another expression called Cradle to Grave. Right. If you move to Sweden or Norway or any of the Scandinavian countries and your child is born there, mm -hmm. the birth is recorded and that individual's life is known to the government from the time they're born until the time they die. So that's called cradle to grave management. Mm -hmm. And no one is allowed to go hungry, no one is allowed to go without clothing or housing or etc. Everyone shares. It's a very sociological thing. It's a very uh, socialism. Yeah. It's a dirty word in this country. Yeah, but, yet, but, but, but a beautiful thing to live within. And yet we have social security. Right, social we security. Care, we have right. unions. Yeah. Come on, right. everybody acts as groups. So and I think, I think the reason why that is a dirty word something it's because dirty word. it's because communism and socialism ism. It's, it, an ism. It, it's an ism and it's been branded and, and just like some religions many religions Christianity Islam included oh don't get uh, me started I, I know but, but, but just like many things can be used uh, inappropriately and I think that isms people get scared because people have used isms before for, for negative reasons oh, right? but yeah. I think you're right when you have a community when you have a co-community right? right. commune we yeah. people are together yeah. like in northern Europe which I think has a very homogenous population so it's easier to get along with people that you're you think you look you you think you have a similar similar thing with but this day and age we're all one right or, well, or, or, I just got back from South Africa so yeah. I told the people there that were of a different color than me yeah I said that was the original color something yeah. bad happened to us right <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what happened I yeah. wish I was still that color but I'm right. not I'm just <laughs> I don't know yeah well I mean I don't know I, I might be well, worse I mean same yeah. jeans same jeans different expression different expression all right. so okay, yeah. so so cradle to cradle versus cradle to grave so, in opposing, 